Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for January 25th, 2016. Yeah, I, 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 I just did the total face palm oh, thing um, Saturday when I was listening to it, and I said 2013. And I was just like, ugh. Moron, you don't even know what year it is. Uh, Sierra's still missing, uh, from what I know. So keeping her in our thoughts. Uh, it was a weekend. The weekend is over. It's back to the grind. I've got to um, apply for graduation this week. I'm probably going to wait till close to the end of the week, I think. But uh, yeah, i got to do that uh, this week. So that they can do the audit sometime in the next... I don't know how quickly they do the audit. Because um, obviously, um, yeah, I, 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 I have three courses left to go. I'm taking two of them this semester, and I obviously haven't started the one that I'll be taking next semester. But I'm assuming I'll get back, you know, unless they wait until after the beginning of the semester to finalize it or something, and they make, and they make sure at least that I've registered for that class kind of thing, perhaps. Uh, I do get early registration, priority registration, uh, as a, as a uh, projected graduate next semester. So that's cool. Get to register a week early. Uh, so Saturday was... You know, kind of do work around the house a little bit. I did some some schoolwork. Uh, I had a, a discussion thing to do for the law class and a, a quiz to do for the law class. And I got those done. And I got some reading done. This week's reading done for the management class. Which is good because we've got our first test on Thursday. And so now I can spend the rest of my management efforts on studying for that test. Probably. I won't say probably. Definitely. The highlight of the weekend was last night. uh, Well, over the weekend... was a con that's in Novi called Confusion. And Novi, it's about 45 minutes from the house. And I had heard that Mer Lafferty was going to be there. And I was just like, oh, God. Because I really couldn't swing it, swing the con fees. But it would have been great to go meet her because I've never met Mer. I would like to meet Mer. That would be cool. And... So Murr was there, and she had mentioned that on one of her podcasts I was listening to, and I'm just like, oh, really? Seriously? She's going to be in the area, and I'm probably not going to be able to, to afford to, to go over there and, and meet her, and that would have been cool. But that didn't happen, but uh, the wife was actually away for Thursday through into late Saturday afternoon, and she got a ping from Dave Robeson from uh, the Roundtable podcast, which I, which I talked about once, I think. And he was at Com- Confusion as well. And he was trying to say, hey, you, you, um, do you want to you wanna hook up for dinner and he, with us and with um, Chris Talent, who's a name I'd heard of uh, who's involved in, in writing stuff out there? And but I didn't realize that he lives in he lives in the Detroit metro area. So yeah, so the five of us got together because uh, Dave had his wife with him. Terry, I think was her name, if I remember correctly. Uh, and we just went there's a Chili's like almost next door, and we went over there and we had a great dinner and had a great conversation and talked about podcasts and writing and Scrivener and other stuff and uh, it was a great evening. We probably were there almost two hours, I'm going to say. 
it was it was great fun, great fun. So that was that was a, a ton of ton of fun, a great conversation, um, and it was just fun that we could bring up Nathan Lowell, and everybody at the table knew who we were talking about. We could talk about Christiana Ellis, and you know. You didn't, have to, you didn't have to explain who she was. You didn't have to tell them about Space Casey or Nina to Kimberly the Merciless or whatever. Um, we could talk about Scott Sigler. We, we actually mentioned all these people uh, over the course of the conversation. And uh, so that was cool. That was really neat. So, you know, we really need to, we really need to check that out. Uh, if it's, you know, the, the wife's got this music convention she goes to every, every weekend. Every weekend, every every January, and, and we're gonna have to see when Confusion falls. Uh, I might have to go by myself if it's uh, when same time as this music thing that she has. We're actually talking about me going along with her and just kind of uh, you know hanging out in downtown Grand Rapids. Uh, but now I kind of want to go to Confusion. <laughs> We need to see lo- the local cons. We have not been to any of the local cons because there's confusion, which I really didn't even know existed until Murr mentioned it. And, and I only that was I only listened to that episode like a couple weeks ago. Uh, I do know there's a Detroit Comic Con at some point downtown. Uh, I haven't been to that one either, and so we really probably ought to really probably ought to uh, you know at least experience those once. Some of the stuff that Dave was talking about that they did with panels sounded like a blast. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to try to check that out. Uh, what else? Well, you know, they did the uh, they did the championship games, the AFC and the NFC championship game, and my my grand prediction for who was gonna be in the Super Bowl uh, was only fifty percent correct. Peyton Manning uh, and his and his team pretty handily handled New England. The score ended up being kind of close. They only won by two points at the end there because um, because uh, Brady and the Patriots did kind of stage a comeback, but. Brady had, I think, four interceptions and was had uh, four sacks, I think, and like 14 knockdowns. So he was on his back a lot, uh, which isn't good for a quarterback. And and he just, you know, he was always having to throw, you know, under pressure off of his back foot, and and yeah, he just never, they just never gave him gave him an opportunity to be comfortable in the pocket because that offensive line could not stop that defense. And so he really didn't have much time at all to do, to get a whole lot going. He did there, you know, for the last drive or two, you know, part of it, you know, really part of it's a coaching loss because I think there were two or three different opportunities where if where it was like fourth and one, fourth and two, they were within field goal range, and Belichick, I'm assuming it was Belichick, but whoever decided to go to go for it instead of taking the three points, and they didn't get it. They didn't get. They didn't. They didn't. They did. They did, they did, they did, they did. Wow. They didn't get the first down. And. You know, I, I know there was at least two of those. And so if you think about it, if they could have, well, I mean, they lost by two points. So if they could have gotten one of those, they would have won by a point. If they got both of them, they would have won by four. You know, so that, to me, that's kind of a, and, and it wasn't like it was, I mean, some of, they, they were both in the fourth quarter, but, you know, it's kind of like you, you do that when you're, you know, and they weren't down that far. It wasn't a super high high scoring game, but because I think the final score was like twenty to eighteen, you 
and so it wasn't really super high. And they were only eight points down before their, their their last drive where they got a touchdown, and then they had to go for two, and they didn't get it. So, yeah, I, I think there's a bit of a, a you know coaching mistakes there uh, in in not going for those field goals. Plus, you know the offensive line just couldn't give Brady enough time to be able to to do his magic. And Peyton looked pretty good. Peyton actually had some zip on his ball. He was looking good. So we'll see what happens in the Super Bowl. You know, we got relatively young Cam Newton versus uh, aging but looking good Peyton Manning. So I guess we'll see how the Super Bowl is. Hopefully it's a good game. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, so I was only I was only half right on, on who's going to the Super Bowl. So I don't really have a... I feel kind of torn because I kind of feel like, you know, the wife likes Peyton Manning. She'll be rooting for him. And I kind of feel like it would be cool for him to win again, but he's also AFC. So I kind of almost feel like I should be rooting for Carolina because they're NFC, I think. Yeah, they're NFC. So, you know, I, I feel like I, I, you know, for for a conference loyalty, I really should be rooting for Carolina, but I don't know. We'll see. I kind of like Peyton, too, so I'll probably end up rooting for, for Denver, even though that, that kind of hurts my Green Bay heart a little bit. But I think I will let that be that for today. I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.